Hello, and welcome to another exciting edition of Jamie Coon Plays. Yet again, we are playing, um, no, I'm playing, you're watching, Everlasting Summer. Alright, so, as it turns out, it is indeed a Russian game. My suspicions have been correct the entire time. And, you know, we're at a camp. In a dream, reality, paradox universe, kidnapped by aliens? We, I don't know yet. Um, okay, anyways, let's get started. Near 50 feet ahead, a small one-story house has popped up on the left side. The billboard near the door said clubs. I was about to come closer when the door suddenly opened and a short girl wearing a pioneer uniform came out. Her pretty, fr her pretty face gave me an impression of bearing a torment for the fate of the whole mankind with a truly universal sorrow. Okay, already decided if it comes to the point where this is indeed kind of a dating game, going for her. I am going for her. As soon as she saw me, the girl froze as if frightened. I froze too, considering what the best to do, to approach first or wait until she shows some initiative, or maybe run away after. Although this last option was considerably staggered only by my self-preservation instinct at least that's what I'd like to believe no not the worst human instinct but one far from being the most logical if this instinct played poker against the deductive abilities the result would be predetermined and those deductive abilities or at least their semblance were hitting me that there was no need to be afraid of this girl Ah oh, shit. Suddenly somebody jumped out of nearby bushes. A girl wearing a bright tee and a red t-shirt with the USSR written on it. Such exact reproduction of the age. She looked quite short from the distance and was probably younger than the pioneer girls at the gate and this girl at the door of the clubs. At last I decided to come closer, but the USSR, our colonial line, jumped out to the first girl and started telling something while sawing in the air. The other girl, in turn, seemed confused, looked down and made no reply. Having a problem, we continued to observe their amusing dialogue, but the USSR suddenly pulled something out of her pocket and started shaking it in front of the first girl's face. <laughs> that something turned out to be a grasshopper. School is the first girl. She must not be too keen on insects as she instantly rushed towards where Lenin presumably made his speech about the accomplished workers and peasants revolution. That to stay towards the square. I love how she just like slid off screen. The USR glanced at me, grinning playfully, and dashed after her. Not a bad start to the day. I have absolutely no clue where I am. Besides that, there are some kids here. Role playing pioneers. And as far as I can tell, this place is located thousands of kilometers away from my home. It might even be a different reality. And this was indeed a reality. I mean, everything around me seems so real. And if, and if a little embellished, that I was starting to fall into thinking that in fact, my previous life could have just been a dream. And what should I do now? I was picking... I was picking the cracks in the tiles which paved the pathway and stared aimlessly at the club's building. Just a few more seconds before I have come up with some decision. That's when I recalled to myself rolling on the grass weeping. I cringed in disgust. Perhaps it's another instinct. When all energy for whimpering and self-pitying is used up, the body is either going to hibernation or mobilize its reserves. Mine seem to have chose the second option because it's out of the blue. I got this determination to figure out what was going on. And in order to do that, I had to act like a man, like a human. 
to maintain the dignity of preservation of my own world. I followed the path to the left, to the right of which stood small cabins, apparently homes for the local pioneers. Actually, they looked quite cozy from the outside. Even though I was born in the Soviet Union, I would have never part of I I have never been part of its children's organizations, neither the pioneers nor even the y younger October children. I imagined the daily life of a typical pioneer camp a bit differently. Huge barracks with long rows of metal bunks, wake up call at six o'clock playing played by sirens, one minute to make your bed then joining formation at the drill square. Or wait, could I be confusing it with something else? Oh, he basically just described basic training. I was suddenly hit on the back. I staggered but remained on my feet, turning around prepared to become a hero huh, a hero on while fighting for my life. Okay. Take it back. Not going for the shag girl. This is the one I'm going for. Damn, girl. Why you bit? My mouth hung open in surprise. Pick your jaw up off the floor. I closed my mouth. Same pioneer uniform, but it looks, uh, let's say, provocative, the way she was wearing it. Like all the girls I had met before, this one was rather cute, but her overly arrogant expression killed any desires to get to know her better, and that's why mine has grown. I like a challenge. So, you're new here. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Fine, see ya. For those of you playing the home edition, I couldn't help it. I had to do the snap my fingers thing because I'm sassy. She dashed uh, a threatening glance at me and walked past. I waited for the pioneer girl to turn the corner. Who knows what else she might have been up to. The most interesting thing was that even this hostile girl seemed completely normal to me. She did not give me any feeling of some deadly danger, except maybe the danger of getting punched in the nose. At last, I managed to make it to the square. There was no Lenin or armor car, although one could really expect something like that after all that happened. Instead, however, a monument to a certain comrade toward the middle of the square. The letters of the pe pedestal read, Genda must have been a big figure of the party. There were some small benches at the sides. It was quite cozy here. Where did the girl tell me to go? To the left or to the right? To the left, to the right, to the left, to the right. And why am I going there anyways? I probably should have paid attention. Alright, I've decided to pretend to be normal. So, to the right. I am 80% sure. No, it's to the left. Through a small grove. I walked to a pier. I must have taken the wrong turn. Oh, wrong way. I turned towards the woods. Damn. The first girl stood before me. I did tell you to turn to the left from the square. And where have you gone? She changed from her pioneer uniform into a bikini. Oh, I still haven't introduced myself. My name is Slyla. Actually, it's a full name. Uh, actually, the full name is Slyla. But everyone calls me Slyla. So, can you? Yeah, I still feel a bit confused. So, I cannot come up with a more meaningful answer. Okay, I'm gonna have to pause it here. I wasn't expecting to have to do girl voices in this one. Um, so I will see if I can get something worked out. Anyways, stay, uh, stay frosty, and thank you for watching.